I'm always finding either dressers without drawers or drawers on the side of the road. Junkin. I never seem to find very often <laughs> drawers with dressers. If I'm out junking and there's an abundance of drawers, I have to come up with a project. Now you can use regular paint when you do this project, but I wanted it to look a little extra chippy. I have a really cool project with an old vintage drawer that I'm going to be working on. Today I'm going to use my DIY paint, Queen Bee. It's a mustardy yellow, it's beautiful color, and I'm going to mix this with my salt wash. If you love a chippy finish, salt wash is the perfect product for you. It's a paint additive. To mix salt wash, you just do 50-50 paint and salt wash. And you could be precise, but if you know me, I just kind of eyeball stuff. But they say when you mix it together, it should kind of be like cake batter mix. And it should be lumpy. Salt wash is an additive to paint and it will not change the paint in any way. It's like a white powder and you don't have to worry about the color changing and you can use it with any paint. So if you have leftover paint, use your salt wash, use it up, old milk paint, you use your good DIY paint, whatever you have, some house paint, it's fabulous to get the chippy finish. You want it to be able to stick to the paintbrush or your mixing utensil and not fall off too easily. I don't know if you can see this. We'll zoom it in so you guys can see. See how lumpy goodness this is? That's about the proper mix. It's like almost playing with mud. I mean, it's real ooey gooey. You can kind of dab it on like this, like you would with a stencil. You can smear it on. It depends how much texture you want. The texture you create is what you're going to see later. It's kind of like a muddy, gooey mess, and you don't have to worry about smooth strokes. Sometimes I get so sick and tired when I'm painting of being told, oh, smooth, long strokes. And once dry, it looks a lot like stucco. I have four of these. I think I'm going to attach these onto the flower box when I get done with it to have it stand up. I also decided to create about five drainage holes. I'm using my 3 8 drill bit. You don't have to be fancy when drilling, just space them out equally. You can also put in a plastic tray or a liner to help protect the bottom when you're finished. Here's the bottom with all the drainage holes. Now time for the fun part, the pretty paint. I'm using DIY paint, cherry picked. DIY is an all natural clay based paint. You can purchase any of the products that you're seeing here on my website. You are just gonna apply your paint over it like you'd paint any other piece. Um, you can do smooth strokes, but you don't have to because we're working with texture. And it will dry, and you can tell DIY paint dries because it lightens up as it dries because of the clay. See how the color's a little lighter? It's okay if you don't cover everything. Remember, you're going to sand and have all of that yellow pop through. I also use DIY paint to paint the inside. I didn't use any salt wash here, just straight old DIY paint and two coats. See how it's lightening as it's drying? This is when the good stuff happens. Let me just show you. Once you get done with this, you want to make sure you get all the dust off. And here's how it looks all sanded. Look at the chippy goodness. Now I decided to seal with an exterior top coat because this is going to be outside. If it's not going to be outside, you could use DIY Big Top. And here's how it looks sealed. Because DIY paint is clay based, the top coat you use will darken the color a little bit. Now to apply the legs. If you're looking for legs for your next project and you're local, you can visit my project shop booth at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall in Lincoln Park where I have lots of legs for your project and lots of other cool stuff too. There's lots of different ways to apply legs. 
I decided to use glue and then I'm going to screw the legs in place from the top but you can also use mounting hardware for your legs with a threaded uh, dowel screw. You might even add a block of wood to the inside of the drawer to help attach your legs to make them more sturdy. It's up to you, but I think for this project, this will hold. Have you attached legs to any of your projects? If so, comment below and tell me what method you prefer. so much for joining me. I hope this has inspired you to salvage, repurpose, and create, and to keep an eye out for all those old drawers on the side of the road. If you want to purchase any of the products that you saw me use here, you can visit my online store, and the link is in the description below. You can also visit, if you are local, my shop at Plaza Antiques and Collectibles Mall. I have two booths there, and all of the information is also below. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe so that I can continue to make great videos showing you how to salvage, repurpose, and create.